my Labor Day weekend was packed with comic book hunting. I'm talking three cities, seven stores. It was awesome. I'm going to give you a recap and then of course I'm going to show you what I got. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them all for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Uh, now on this channel, I do talk about comics. <laughs> I do unboxing videos, haul videos, reviews, and everything in between. So if you're interested in that type of content, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell icon so that you're notified whenever new videos of mine go live. Now, Obviously, this weekend was super packed, super fun. It was Labor Day weekend, and um, I decided to celebrate Labor Day by uh, getting a bunch of comic book shopping done. So let's talk about how this all went down. It all started when my homie Trey in the K-Squad decided to let every, put everyone on notice that the Ollies in Cary, North Carolina, uh, which is pretty close to where I live in Raleigh, uh, has restocked. They had a bunch of new stuff available, uh, and I'm like, hmm. Well, if Carrie got a restock, maybe Raleigh got a restock. So on Thursday, I went ahead out to Ollie's in Raleigh. Now, you guys know from my last Ollie's video, I was kind of like, eh. And so I didn't even bring the camera. I didn't record anything with my phone. I just went into Ollie's and was pleasantly surprised. And so that led into Labor Day weekend. Now, this weekend, I had to go and pick up my sister-in-law, from college and she goes to school in Greensboro. And so it was like, all right, I'm gonna pick her up Friday. I'm gonna take her back on Monday. But after Thursday's score, I was like, hmm, what if I stopped at every Ollie's between Raleigh and Greensboro this weekend and just made a whole weekend vlog out of it? And so I went on Friday uh, and I was like, all right, cool. I went and picked her up. I made one stop. I did make one stop uh, on Friday, and that was to the Ollie's in Burlington. Now, my plan was I wasn't even going to do this whole Ollie's tour until uh, Monday because, you know, I got more time in the day on Monday. I can get up early and make sure I'm able to hit every store. But there was so much traffic on Friday evening. I just got off the highway just because I was tired of sitting in traffic. So I went ahead to Ollie's in Burlington and browsed the shelves. And for a second, I was like, huh, I mean, this is cool. Nothing I haven't seen before. Um, now, if you're not familiar, Ollie's is one of those uh, discount surplus warehouse type stores. Uh, so a lot of times they buy overstock from other retailers or distributors and they sell them at like rock bottom prices. I mean, I've got, I'm looking at a trade paperback that had a retail price of, uh, seventeen ninety nine, and I got it for three dollars. Right, so that's the type of stuff you can expect to see at Ollie's. And so in Greensboro, I'm like, ah, I see, I'm seeing the same trade paperbacks that I saw in Raleigh. Blah blah blah. This, it's, I mean, not not Greensboro, Burlington. I'm like, I'm seeing the same stuff. But then there's one aisle that I didn't even know was there. It was kind of hidden. I just happened to turn down, and I'm looking. I'm like, oh snap! There's a bunch more trades here. I found something really interesting that I'll show you at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, so that was my Thursday, or excuse me, that was my Friday night. Went, picked up my sister, came home, and was like, all right, on Monday, we're going to get out of the house kind of early, and we're going to go to a bunch of spots. Um, this is my opportunity to kind of show her around uh, the new area she's going to be living in and all the places she can get to from the campus shuttles and all that, since, you know, I went to college in Greensboro, too. Uh, so it was fun. We made a whole day out of it, and I was like, look bear with me while I'm showing you around. There's a bunch of comic shops that I want to hit and um, and I want to hit up some Ollie's as well. So the first stop I wanted to make was to Acme Comics in Greensboro. Acme, you know, like uh, Looney Tunes, right? Well, Acme Comics in Greensboro was closed on Monday for Labor Day. I don't fault them, right? I mean, you should give your employees a holiday on Labor Day. Um, but I was really bummed because I really wanted to go to that shop. I had never been there because I wasn't into comics when I was in college. Um, and apparently they've been there the whole time in an area that I used to frequent all the time. But anyway, uh, so Acme Comics was closed. So the next place on the list to visit was Sailfish Comics Greensboro. 
Now, Sailfish Comics has been in the area, I think they said about seven years. Uh, they've been there since 2015, if I'm not mistaken, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I left Greensboro in 2012. But browsing in Sailfish Greensboro, it's a very clean store. It kind of reminds me of my LCS Ultimate Comics, except their actual storefront is a lot smaller. So it was kind of cramped. I didn't really feel comfortable filming. I kind of wanted to get in and get out and get out of people's way. Uh, but they had a nice selection of graphic novels, which I feel like uh, any good shop should have a good selection of graphic novels for people that are newer to the hobby. They had a kid's section along the wall, and my daughter thought that was amusing because she had a lot of the titles already. Um, and of course, they had stuff on the wall like uh, a bunch of Ultimate Fallout 4s and slabs and stuff. Um, but anyway, I went through their back issues for a second, didn't really find anything. My daughter was enamored with this uh, display case that they had where they're basically selling loose action figures with no boxes for like $8, $12, and $20 respectively. So. She ended up getting an action figure, and then as I'm about to check out with her doll, I notice there is something really cool at the counter that I told you I was going to show you later. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I promise I'm going to show you guys all the books at the end, but I definitely came away with something really dope at Sailfish Comics, so shout out to them. I'll leave their Instagram information in the link below. Very nice staff. Really cool. Uh, so anyway... The first stop in Greensboro was Sailfish Comics. It was a win. There was definitely a score there. And then the next stop in Greensboro was Ollie's. Of course, so Ollie's is like right off Wendover in Greensboro. Um, I remember there being a Kmart in that area when I used to live there. But I mean, again, that was like 10 years ago. So I go to Ollie's and this Ollie's is pretty well stocked. Um, there's a lot of stuff, but... Again, the selection is much, much like the same that I was seeing in Raleigh and as well in Burlington. So, I mean, what's really cool about Ollie's is like the stuff that kind of slides under the radar. Like you might go into uh, the art book section and find like a how to draw comics or you might find like um, like I found the art of jock art book one time. Uh, but, yeah, you find really cool stuff. What's really interesting about Ollie's is like the the onesie twosie items that people may pick over or not realize what it is. Uh, so there was a situation like that at the Burlington Ollie's. There's a book that I saw. Um, as far as common things that I kept seeing, I kept seeing a bunch of New 52 trade paperbacks, Batman and Robin Volume 1, uh, Batgirl uh, volume one by Gail Simone, uh, the Batgirl Rebirth run. Uh, I think Batgirl of Burnside is what it's called. Kept seeing a lot of that. Um, Watchmen Noir. I saw Watchmen Noir both in Burlington and in Greensboro. Uh, I decided not to pull the trigger because uh, I wasn't super fond of the art. I love the Unwrapped series, but Noir just kind of looks like the old showcase books. And I was just like, eh. Maybe for different artists, you might appreciate the inking a little bit more. Um, and I feel like it's blasphemy to, ne to not really enjoy Brian Ballin's inkling, inking like that. But I didn't. And, you know, oh, wait, that's not Brian Ballin. That's Dave Gibbons that did Watchmen. Anyway, I didn't pick up Watchmen Noir. Um, I'm going to show you guys what I grabbed in just a second. But anyway, I left Ollie's and we went ahead and we we're supposed to be going back to campus. And I'm like, you know what? As we're driving down the street, I'm like, hey, there used to be an Ed McKay's on this road when I was in college. And then I look and I'm like, oh, snap, it's still there and it's open. Uh, now, I have to say my Ollie's tour kind of got cut short. I was planning to hit up Ollie's in Burlington, Durham and Greensboro all on Monday. But Ollie's, uh, all, all the Ollie's locations closed at 530 on Monday, which was Labor Day. And uh, so I only got to make it to one. But no worries. It's all good because I made a made a, I made a, my way to a bunch of comic shops. Uh, so anyway, uh, Ollie's was a bust. Uh, well, it wasn't. I got one thing from Ollie's there. And then we headed over to Ed McKay's kind of on a whim. Now, Ed McKay's it's always been a big store. I mean, it's, it's, it's been in that same location in Greensboro forever, but I don't remember them having comics, maybe because I wasn't into comics then. So that store had changed a lot since last time I've been there. They had 
a lot of graphic novels. Like they had a lot of books. Um, but the one downside to Ed McKay's is that they've got stickers on all of their books. And those stickers just look like they'd be a nightmare to try to remove. Um, beyond the fact that they were stickers on all the books, the books weren't like that low priced like compared to going to ollie's where you can get like a new trade paperback for like three bucks going to ed mckay's and you're getting like you know i don't know six dollars off cover price and it's just like eh, i'm good i'm good on that uh so plus it would have taken me years to get through everything at that ed mckay's uh but still cool so if you're in the greensboro area uh ed mckay's is on what is that street it's like as you're making your way to Battleground, it's like Joseph, it's not even ACOC anymore. Anyway, the point is, I think that street kind of turns into Market Street or something. You know where it is. Uh, I'll put a link. I'll put a, the address on the screen or something because I sound crazy right now. But anyway, Ed McKay's right down the street from Acme Comics. If you love, if you know Greensboro, there you go. Um, and so I went ahead, dropped my sister-in-law off back at school. And me and my daughter, we were going to hit the road and go back to Raleigh. And I was like, you know what? It's still daylight. We still got a little bit of time before stuff should be closing. Let me just run a quick Google search for comic shops in Greensboro. And I happened to find one right near UNCG's campus, which is where I went to school. Uh, so we stopped at the Comic Dimension on Spring Garden Street. Um, and it brought back so many memories. One, because I literally used to live off Spring Garden Street uh, for years and never knew there was a comic shop. And you know why I didn't know there was a comic shop? Because it didn't exist when I was living there. So yeah, the comic dimension has been operating since 2015. I think Sailfish had been operating since about 2013, if I remember correctly. But anyway, we stop in the comic dimension in Greensboro. Now, the comic dimension was really, really cool. The one thing that's going to set them apart from like every other place, they have these huge life size statues. So as you walk in, there's this huge, incredible Hulk statue. Uh, there's also a huge Spider-Man statue. My daughter took pictures in front of it. It was great. Um, now, the comic dimension, they specialize in like tabletop games. So like Magic the Gathering, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. That is the end of my tabletop game knowledge. I think Yu-Gi-Oh! Does Yu-Gi-Oh! count? Anyway, clearly their store was catered to that, the gaming audience. The comic section of this comic shop was ironically small. They did have a lot of manga there as well. But again, they were like right off of UNCG's campus. So I think they're just playing to the audience around the store. Uh, but with that said, I didn't pick up anything for myself. My daughter ended up buying like a, a game piece that she didn't realize was a game piece because it was dolphins. Uh, and I got like a little board book for my, for my baby girl. Um, and that ended up being our last stop of the evening uh, before we just headed back to Raleigh. So it, overall, a very fun comic book hunting trip. You've seen some B-roll, you've seen some footage, but now I should probably just show you what I went ahead and bought, right? So we'll start with the, all the stuff that I got in Raleigh at Ollie's while I was, you know, shopping. Uh, the, the trip that kicked it all, the whole idea off. So we'll start with the trade paperbacks. I ended up getting this. Uh, this is Green Lantern, Green Lanterns, Volume One, uh, by Sam Humphreys. Let's put that over here. Green Lanterns by Sam Humphreys, uh, Robson Roca, uh, Ed Benes, and more. More. Uh, but anyway, got that one, uh, and again, this had a cover price of fourteen ninety nine, and I got it for two ninety nine at Ollie's. That's why you go, out, you go to Ollie's. Good stuff cheap, right? Next up, I got this. Superman Earth One by J. Michael Straczynski and Shane Davis. This I already own in hardcover from the Eagle Moss uh, collections. So obviously this is going to end up being a giveaway prize one day soon. That's also one thing I love about going to Ollie's, getting these cheap trades. Like I get to share my love of comics with the audience and with, you know, friends and family without spending an arm and a leg. So Superman Earth One, uh, I've heard is really good. The artwork looks good. 
At least that cover does. And then this one, this one's for me. But this is Batman and Robin, the New 52 by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. This is volume one, the trade paperback entitled Born to Kill. Obviously a reference to Damian Wayne, who just can't get right. Uh, but yeah, loving this book, um, the artwork. I really want this omnibus but I missed out. I should have just bought it on Amazon while it was available for like a year. As soon as it went out of print, you know, sometime in the last six months, all of a sudden everybody wants it. Um, and I'm everybody. So. so those are the trade paperbacks I got in Raleigh. Now let's take a look at these two deluxe hardcovers I also picked up at Ollie's in Raleigh on Capitol Boulevard. So first up, this was the one I was most excited about. This is the Flash Rebirth Volume 1 uh, Deluxe Edition. So it's an oversized hardcover. Originally had a cover price of $34.99. I got this one for $6.99. Super dope. Um, also, people have been spotting the Jim Lee Suicide Squad Deluxe Edition Volume 1. I didn't see that in any of the Ollies that I visited this weekend. So, But people have been seeing it. I'm excited about this. This one is written by uh, Joshua Williamson. Art by Carmine. I'm not even going to try that name. And uh, colors by Ivan Placencia. <laughs> so, or inks, maybe. Who does them? Who does the? Who does what? But anyway, so that's dope. I got that hardcover. And then this is Fables. Fables of Deluxe Edition, book one. Fables was a Vertigo series that I believe ran like five deluxe issues. So like 50, so, 50 or so issues. Um, I I don't know anything about this. Let's see. Imagine all the characters from the world's most beloved storybooks were real and living among us with all their powers intact. How would they cope with, it, with life in our mundane, unmagical reality? Interesting. Um, so... I've heard nothing but great things about this series. It's just looking at the artwork, it doesn't really look like my jam. But for $5.99, marked down from $29.99, I figured I'd give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. So that's all I got from Ollie's in Raleigh. And of course, the next stop was Ollie's in Burlington, this random stop in Alamance County, North Carolina. Uh, and the first thing I got was not a comic book at all, but it was this. This is a set of Heroes of the Resistance playing cards, but the cards are encased in this Stormtrooper helmet, which just, it's just really cool to me. Like, that's just dope. So I plan to just display this with my Star Wars books. And if we ever need to play cards, I got, I got some cards I can play with now. Uh, now here was the sleeper find of the trip of, this was, this kind of made all the Ollie's trips worth it. This is, Terror Titans, the trade paperback. Terror Titans, written by Sean McKeever, with art by Joe Bennett. Um, and if I'm being completely honest, this series was kind of whack. I went, ahead, I read the trade almost immediately. Now I know of Terror Titans for one reason, because this mini series is the series that introduces Static to the DCU proper. Now, so Static's first appearance. Is right here in Terror Titans number three. And then his first full appearance um, in the DCU ends up being, uh, you know, issue four. And, you know, here he is. But, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but basically Static is being mind controlled. And he's really, it was like they only put him in there just to flex and say, hey, look, we have Static now. But, um, Whatever. Cool piece of history that I didn't have to pay a bunch of money for. I got this for $2.99, marked down from $10. Um, and then the last thing I bought at Ollie's in Burlington was this. This is Batman, The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, this has the book as well as a mask, The Dark Knight Returns cowl. Uh, so honestly, I own this book already. It looks like it's got a trade paperback inside. Um, I own the I own this book in deluxe edition already, so I'm probably going to give away the book. But I really wanted that cowl, so now I have it, and it was only six ninety nine, marked down from forty dollars. Very cool. So that's what I got from Ollie's uh, in Burlington, North Carolina. 
And then, you know, on day three or whatever, we ended up going to Greensboro. And the first stop was at Sailfish Comics. So at Sailfish Comics Greensboro, I didn't buy any graphic novels. There wasn't anything that I didn't already have. I didn't have time to go through the back issue long boxes. I didn't want to bore anybody. Um, but when I saw this on the counter, I knew I had to get it. And that was this. The Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide. This is the 51st edition for the years 2021 and 2022. This one I bought specifically because it's got artwork on it. Uh, this cover is by Dennis Cowan, Bill Sienkiewicz, and Chris Sotomayor. Um, pretty sure that's how you say that, Sotomayor. But anyway, you see static here. You see hardware there. Uh, so... I, you know, I'm a huge Milestone Media fan. So having this cover by Dennis Cowan, the reason I really love it is because Static is wearing the Milestone M logo on his hat. You don't see that anymore. Not since the rebirth of the cool issue number one. But anyway, here we go. Got a little nice little hit on the spine too. Static on the comic book price guide. I'm literally never going to use this price guide. I, um, I opened it up. And I kind of looked up like the first appearance of Static and all that stuff to see like what they were going for. Prices in this guide are like significantly lower than what you see in like recent eBay sold listings. So if you happen on a shop that sells back issues and they're going by the Overstreet guide, probably get you a nice deal. Um, but the last place that I actually bought a comic from was Ollie's in Greensboro off Wendover Road. And the book that I got was this trade paperback. This is Wolverine Weapon X Unbound. Uh, this one's got story by Larry Hama of G.I. Joe fame and uh, art by Mark Silvestri. And this is just like the best of 90s Wolverine art. Like, how do you not love this? Like, there's no way you read this and you don't just love all the art. Like, look at that. That's just dope. Um, now, so this collects Wolverine numbers 47 through 57. Uh, fun fact, this has not been collected in omnibus format yet. Um, if there's a Wolverine omnibus volume three, I believe it would end up covering these books. Um, but just in case it's not, I have it because I really I really just like this artwork. Like I said, it's just the best of 90s Wolverine. And of course, Wills Portacio worked extensively with Jim Lee uh, on X-Men, went on later to found Image Comics with the crew. Uh, so just this is just 90s art, like the extreme era at its finest. I keep saying that. But that's, that's all the books I got. So uh, all in all, I'd say this comic book hunting trip was worth it. I mean, wouldn't you? Uh, so it was very cool, you know, shopping on a discount or shopping, yeah, getting stuff at a discount is super dope. Uh, so shout out to Ollie's. Uh, like I said, Ollie's is not going to have like the newest stuff. They're not even going to have stuff that you really, you're not going to know what's going to be in there before you go, unless you have a friend that kind of tips you off. Um, so there you go. Um, by the way, shout out to the homie Marcus, who I just happened to meet at Ed McKay's and he's like, yo. You sound familiar, aren't you on YouTube? Yes, I'm on YouTube. So if you're watching, shout out to you um, and thanks for supporting the channel. Um, but anyway, anyway, I'm rambling guys. I need to go ahead and just end this video. I hope you saw something you liked. If you did, give it a thumbs up because YouTube doesn't know apparently unless you actually do. So just, just click the thumbs up, click it. But if not, hey, that's cool because you can always buy what you like. Uh, just make sure you read what you buy and be nice to others, because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.